my daughter. She was about five years old. I came into the room and I saw her with my fat textbook of medicine, thousands of pages. And she was so absorbed, her lips were moving. So I was asking her, what could this girl be getting from this uh, textbook of medicine? And she was so consumed by what she was reading that she didn't know even when I walked into the room. So I walked across over her shoulder to see what she was reading because there were no pictures there that she would uh, look at. And I saw that that textbook was turned upside down. <laughs> now, <laughs> what, what do you gain reading a book that is what? Turned upside down. Nothing. But well, hear me well, hear me well. Any portion of scripture you approach without the help of the Holy Spirit is like a textbook turned upside down. You're not going to get anything from it. The Bible says the natural man cannot accurately design or interpret the language of God. No, you don't have what it takes to touch the life and liberty that comes from God's word. I say this under heaven. When the light of God's healing power hits you from his word, no power of sickness can keep you bound. If the light of God's word hits you in the area of deliverance, there are no chains fashioned by hell that can keep you in bondage. That word carries power. It carries life. But if you just touch the letters, the letters will kill you. Beyond the letters is the life that only the Holy Spirit can introduce you to. You've seen coconut before. Have you seen coconut before? Now, if you've never seen coconut before, and I try to introduce you to coconut, that coconut is a very delicious... Uh, is it fruit now? Or is it, is it fruit? Do you categorize it as fruit? Okay, let's call it fruit. That you've never seen, be seen it before. And then you went to the market to purchase coconut, came back home and washed it, and settled down to eat it, and began to grapple with the shell. Now, all you get is your mouth full of what? Death. And if you don't take time, it could injure you. So you'll be tempted to doubt the man of God that told you that coconut is a very delicious fruit. But before you touch the delicious part, you've got to crack it. You've got to open it. And when it comes to the scripture, listen to me, you can grapple with the letters. I've had people memorize the scripture. It doesn't produce any life in them. Quote the scriptures. It doesn't produce any liberty. But the day the Holy Ghost cracks it open and gives you access to just one verse of scripture, you'll be amazed the kind of liberty it will produce in your life. Please depend on the only one who qualifies to give you access to the life in God's word. There's nothing to do with your PhD. There are market women. They can't read too much. But the little they read, they ponder on it, meditate on it, depend on the Holy Spirit, and you see them feeling in liberty. Because the natural man is not equipped with the senses, spiritual senses, that can touch the life in God's word. Now, if for instance you see a blind man, somebody who was born, born blind, how do you attempt to describe the color of a rainbow to that person? Somebody who was born blind. How would you do that? Talk to me. It's almost impossible. It's like screaming at the cops. It's not going to respond. In the same way, hear me well. Without the ministry of the Holy Spirit, this is your two natural eyes. Your brain falls short of what it takes to touch the liberty that comes from God's word. That's why you need him. And you need to heavily depend on him. Make him your closest friend. Choose him as your greatest teacher. Even when you sit in a meeting like this, have ears that will design his voice. Because at times he speaks beyond what the preacher is saying. Please lift up your hands. Say, I love you, Holy Spirit. Say it again, I love you, Holy Spirit. Now permit me to use this example as a form of parable. In Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to verse 5. When Jesus entered and passed through, through Jericho, now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich, and he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was a, of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. I must stay at your house. Now you can see that Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, but could not. For what reason? Number one, the crowd. Number two, he was of short stature. So because of the crowd and because of the short stature of Zacchaeus, he could not see Jesus. So what did he do? He ran, saw a sycamore tree in front and climbed it. Sycamore tree are trees that have branches that are close to the ground that you can climb to ascend to higher heights. And that sycamore tree is the type and the shadow of the ministry of what? Of the Holy Spirit. But there is no way you would see Jesus as he is. Why? Because of the crowd. Crowd of what? Crowd of ideas, of the philosophies of men, the teachings handed over, over the ages to confuse us, to try to obscure us from the truth of God's word. And I'm telling you, the spirit of the age, especially in the age we are living in, the postmodern man, what he believes, what he teaches, is enough to confuse the average person. There is no way you listen to the garbage that comes from our institutions, that comes from the press, that comes from the media. There is no way you listen to such garbage and be able to accurately design who Jesus is. Even a lot of the religious garbage we listen to kind of scare us from the truth. Everywhere is crowded by so much false teachings. So how do you see Jesus as he truly is? You must admit that you and I, no matter how highly talented we are, we are people of little stature. In spite of your PhDs, when it comes to the scripture, you are like an imbecile. So all of us, are men and women, 
of little stature. And we are crowded by so many false teachings that nobody can accurately design this Jesus that we are speaking about without the help of the Holy Spirit. One time Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, are? The answers they gave were religious answers, but they were not the correct answers. Some say you are Jeremiah, some say you are John the Baptist, some say you are Elijah. Now, there's a huge difference between Jeremiah and Jesus. The day you confuse the two, brother, you'll be locked up in bondage. There's a huge difference. No matter how great Elijah was, he's not in the same class as Jesus. But religious teachings will make you accept something that is a substitute for the truth. Therefore, with all the crowd of false teachings today, pulpits dishing out death to God's people, the only way you can get an accurate insight to design Jesus as he truly is, is to depend on the Holy Spirit. That's the common tree. You climb it to ascend beyond natural reasons. And when you see Jesus as he truly is, the encounter begins. Since I want to say again, that that Bible you are holding can produce enough light to bring liberty in any area of your life. Please raise your hand and say, I believe that. Tonight, there may be no need to pray for your healing. Just one scripture. That the Holy Spirit quickens will break the backbone of that satanic arrogance. Just one scripture. I saw from God's word the fact that Jesus, Jesus became poor so that through his poverty, I would be made rich. I saw it very clearly. And I discovered that this thing called poverty, it respects light. And when I came in contact with it, there was no need for me to pray for God to prosper me. I knew what to do. And no Satan can block my harvest from coming. Since many times your problem is not the devil. It's lack of knowledge. It's ignorance. The only thing I know that is strong enough to obstruct your path, to destroy you, even when God is still your God, is not Satan. God said, my own people, they are destroyed. Not because God has lost his power. Not that because Satan has become omnipotent. My own people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So that is the wicked force that can destroy God's people when God is still their God. Not Satan, not witches, but ignorance. You've had me share my testimony. I hope I don't bore you. When witches came to my house looking for blood to suck, they didn't know that they missed their road. They had caused major accidents on this Zaria Joshua, killed a lot of people. But that night they had appetite for the blood of a pastor. So they knew I was a pastor and they visited my house. So at about 2 a.m. I was sleeping when I perceived evil in the room. Because this body is sleeping, but my spirit is active, it's alive. I perceived evil in the room. So I turned towards the window. I was like in a state of trance, turned towards the window. And then I saw this witch staring down at me, horrible looking, with long incisor of teeth. It was ready to pounce on me. So what I did will interest you. Amen? Let me ask you, bro, what would you have done? Eh? Take authority, isn't it? Plead the blood of Jesus, speak in tongues, call the Holy Ghost fire, or run out of the room. I know some of you would have gotten up to pray and battle the devil to submission, but I had prayed before I slept. Now, you know, well, the Holy Spirit can wake me up at any time to pray, but not a witch. Now, that's the truth under heaven. So what I did was, I was aware there was a gulf between me and that which that it could not cross. I was very confident of that. I was confident of the fact that there was a blood fence around me that that which could not cross. If it made the attempt, that would be its last mission. I was very confident of that. So there was no need to pray. I took my covering cloth and covered my head. Now, before I did that, I smiled at the witch. You know, the day Satan shows up is what you know that will tame him. Now, I didn't know what happened that night because I had a nice sleep, enjoyed my sleep. Nobody pressed me down on the bed, I bought with my money. But two weeks later, we were holding a convention in one hall in that city. We organized it, and my guest speaker was ministry. And the head witch came to that program. She came not to hurt anybody, but to investigate my source of power. And it was a fairly huge meeting. She was sitting at the back. The man of God was still preaching when God's power knocked her down. Nobody touched her. And she got born again before the altar call was made. She got born again in a hurry. I mean, how can you just sit in there like this? A force just knocks you down. So some few weeks, months later, it was during the church service, people lined up to give testimony. And they were coming one after the other. And I saw this woman. I said, ah, we have met somewhere before. She said, yes, sir. Then she told me of what happened that night, that she and her colleagues visited me to kill me. But when I looked at her and I smiled, that what I did was I roared in laughter. And that the house began to quake. And she told her fellows, we have come to the wrong place. Isn't that wonderful? Now, all I did was to smile with knowledge, backing it up. And God amplified it, and it became a weapon the enemy could not withstand. Let me say it again. After all that Jesus dealt on Calvary's cross to the devil, what is left of Satan is not enough to block your path. That's the truth on the heaven. What is left of him? I asked you today, what would Satan look like 10 minutes after Jesus rose from the dead? And you told me, that picture has not changed. So what the devil has done is to start his campaign of deception to veil people from the truth. Organize 
deception to deceive you to believe what is not true and when it comes to deception satan has no equal what makes him dangerous is not his strength it's not his subtlety but what his deception i'm sorry not his strength but his subtlety his ability to deceive that's what makes him dangerous and that's why the antidote to satanic deception is the ministry of the holy spirit he is the truth he is the revealer of the truth and once you get a hold of the truth jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free and i say it again no matter who you are in this audience today or those of you watching me online every man born of a woman who depends on his natural senses does not qualify to access the deep things of god the reality of god's word all of us without the holy spirit are like zacchaeus we are crowded out by the confusing sounds and noise we're hearing around us and we're all men of short stature without the holy spirit building capacity in us to contain the truth and that's why we depend on him how many of you love him so that from today as you approach the scriptures you know there is something there if you contact it it will leave you with a living testimony it's very disturbing to see people read the bible over and over and over and over and it's like it produces nothing in their lives why should it be so when god's word is living it's active it's sharper than any treasure sword it can produce freedom and liberty there are no gates no chains of satanic oppression fashioned by hell that will not break open when it contacts the light of god's word so i decree that from tonight the chains that want to hold you bound they are broken in the name of jesus even if they had operated as patterns from your ancestors. It takes just one verse of scripture coming alive before you step on that platform of liberty. The devil has been brought to naught and made of no effect. That's for sure. So when you approach God's word, what I would encourage you to do is to learn the art of meditation. Don't, don't just skim through. Get a verse of scripture. Ponder on that scripture. When you are doing that, you are giving the opportunity for the Holy Spirit to encapsulate it. As you ponder on that scripture, you meditate on that scripture, you are telling that scripture, I won't let you go unless you bless me. I won't let you because I know there is life in you. There is freedom in you. I won't let you go until you deliver what you contain. And that now gives the Holy Spirit the opportunity to open it up to you. Because you are aware. He's attracted to those who are hungry. Like Zacchaeus. What can make a rich man like Zacchaeus run? Before people that knew him. It was hunger. It was hunger. And humility. But you see a man like that, so wealthy, maybe a millionaire, climbing a tree in the daytime. Ah, people would have said, what is this man doing? What has gone wrong with him? He was driven by hunger. God always responds to those who are hungry. Those who tell the Holy Spirit, as I lay hold on this scripture, open it up for me. Can I pray for you? May God take you to a new level of revelation. I didn't hear your amen. Well, may he take all of us to a greater height of insight.